Second Chronicles chapter 27, verse number 6. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. It says, Jotham became mighty because he had prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Jotham became mighty because he had prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Is anybody open so you can read for us? I was trying to do it. No, you did it right. I said it right. Okay, let's have the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I share with your church this short message on preparation, help us to prepare in everything that we do so that we won't do things haphazardly, we won't do things anyhow, but everything that our hands find in doing, we'll do it with all our minds. To the praise and to the glory of your name. Yeah. Yes. As preachers, when we are preaching, we'll prepare very well. Yeah. As people who sing, we'll sing very well. As people who go out to talk to people about Jesus, we we'll do it very well. Help us to understand the importance and the need for preparation. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Make my lips like the pen of a ready writer and make me a blessing. Even as I share this word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Bible says, so Jotham became mighty because he had prepared his ways before the Lord his God. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 27, verse number 6. If you read from verse 1, it gives us beautiful introduction and life history of King Jotham. We are told that he was 25 years when he became king. And he ruled in Jerusalem for 16 years. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. You remember, Israel was practicing theocracy. Theocracy is where God is their leader. So, always the kings, when their reign comes to an end, we are told whether they please God or they displease him. But for Jotham, we are told that his ways pleased the Lord. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. And then he built the upper gate of the house of the Lord. He also built cities in, in the mountains of Judah. Then he built fortresses and towers in the forest. He defeated the Amorites and the king of Ammon gave him 100 talents of silver 10,000 cores of wheat and 10,000 of belly in three consecutive years. He did very well as he ruled God's people. But the secret behind the success of Jotham is what we can find in verse number 6. It says, Jotham became mighty. Somebody said Jotham became mighty. Jotham became mighty. Because he had prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Mm -hmm. In other words, for you to become mighty, for you to become successful, your preparation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. When I was working for MNT Bank, one of the few things I learned that I'll never forget is the phrase, preparation prevents panic. Anytime you are well prepared, it prevents panic. But when you are not prepared and you are called to do something, you realize it tells on your face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is seen around you that this guy is not very well prepared. When you are asked to sing, when you are asked to pray, when you are asked to preach, when you are asked to give a testimony, and you know you were, it was a surprise to you, and you've not done it very well, no preparation is at stake, you come and you don't do it very well. About two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, we were watching one of my favorite boxes, Floyd Mayweather. Anytime Mayweather is boxing, I will even prefer to sacrifice my lunch, so I will order the fights. Because I love him. I love him because he's the only boxer in the world who has fought for several years and nobody has been able to defeat him. No, no, it's not true. He didn't, he, he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to fight a Filipino guy. But remember, remember, he fought. He fought Felix Trinidad, Tito, 
when Tito was the best in the world, he fought Oscar de la Hoya. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez. When nobody has ever beaten Julio Cesar Chavez, he fought all the great fighters. The reason why he didn't want to fight the, the <laughs> Filipino is because he wanted the Philip Pacquiao. He wanted Pacquiao to go and do blood tests 48 hours before the fight. It doesn't make sense anyway. No. And they were going to offer him $50 million for the fight. He said, well, I won't fight him. Mm -hmm. And all the boxing promoters said, we know you can beat this man. So why would you fight him? He said, no, he has to do blood tests. Because he knows that Pacquiao is scared of blood tests. And he gave back your condition that the blood should be drawn mm. 48 hours to the fight. Mm. It doesn't make sense. So instead of them fighting in the ring, they went to court. Mm -hmm. But I like him. I like him because his middle name is Money. So now they call him Floyd Money Mayweather. See, if you watch his fight, it is exciting. Before the fight, he will pick phone and call. He lives in Michigan. He will call Bentley where they sell Bentley cars in Michigan. They say, hey, this is Floyd Mayweather. Bring, bring, bring a brand new Bentley to my house. I'll pay cash, 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 not check cash. And then he will sh they will show a place in his house where a lot of $100 bills in bundles is packed. And he has about 18 of the Bentley, same color. He brags a lot, and he makes boxing interesting <laughs> and exciting. Mm. But you see, the reason why I talk about him is this. Check this out. Check this out, church. When they are going to box, right, the boxing lasts for only, if they will go the whole rounds, only 36 mm. minutes. 36 minutes. That is, if nobody knocks out anybody, they fight for 36 minutes. Mm. But do you know that they train for six months? Mm -hmm. Six solid months. Since good man, they'll be training. Mike Mudak was saying he was privileged to meet George Foreman. He said George Foreman is his mentor. Mm. And he asked George Foreman, George Foreman, what is the secret of your success? George Foreman told him, I wake up every day at 2.30 a.m. to jog till 6 o'clock. Oh, he said, but Foreman, I thought you are very rich. <laughs> do you like jogging? He said, no. He said, no, why do you do that? He said, because I don't want anybody to beat me. So I have to prepare very well before I get into the ring. Oh. Could you believe that? Mm -hmm. He has so much money, but he didn't want anybody to beat him. So he will spend greater part of his time training, preparing. Boxes use six months to prepare for only, what, 36 minutes. Mm -hmm. Fights. Mm -hmm. Could you believe that? Mm -hmm. Soccer is played on Sundays or Saturdays. And they use five days to train and then play for 90 minutes. So you see, preparation should take more time than the main activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The problem with many Christians is we do things by faith. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are not being successful. Mm -hmm. Check in family cathedral, we are going to be successful. We need to put a lot of preparation yeah. into what we are doing. Mm -hmm. When I know I'm preaching, what I do is, if you have been to where we live, I walk for a very long time and I rehearse my preaching more than six times mm -hmm. on a particular day. And then I'll pray for a long time before I go back to bed. I do that every now and then. Mm -hmm. So whilst I'm lying down, I'll ask myself, what did I say that I shouldn't have said? What, should I, what do I have to say that I didn't say? So I keep on picking it, I keep on preparing it so that I will do it better. And then, my children and my wife will tell you, when I go home, the first thing is, before even I undress, I listen to the message. Before I even thank God. Before I even thank God, before I pray, I listen to the message. To make sure I've not disappointed God. I want to entreat you, if you are going to be successful in this life, put preparation in everything that you do. If we are not going to prepare and we do things anyhow, we go nowhere. We go nowhere. The reason why many Christians easily fall by the wayside is because they don't have roots. Mm -hmm. When you don't have roots, when the wind, the storm, and the rain comes, it will expose your weakness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whether you like it or not, in this life, there will always be the wind. There will always be the sun. There will always be the rain. It will come to check the stability 
of your faith mm -hmm. and to come and check upon what is your foundation built. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave a very beautiful parable in Matthew chapter 7 about the two builders. He said one built in the sand, the other built on the rock. So let's take visual journey. We are looking at two magnificent buildings. Let's say on WT Harris. Two magnificent buildings. They all look alike. So gorgeous. But the difference between these two buildings has to do with what upon what are they built. Whereas one is built on the sand, the other is built on the rock. You see, when you are building in the sand, if it will take you three days, building on the rock will take you about three months. So laying foundation church is very, very difficult. But then a day will come to prove upon what is your work built on. Mm -hmm. Psalm 11 verse number 3. Bible says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how righteous you are. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. It doesn't matter how well you can preach. Mm -hmm. If you don't have foundation, mm -hmm. you go nowhere. And that is why, church, we need solid foundation mm -hmm. in everything that we do in this time, in this life. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, check this out, church. When he was 12 years old, you remember? And the parents took him to the temple, Luke chapter 2. He could answer all the questions the religious leaders posed to him. He, 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 you could tell he knew better than all of them. He could have said, well, let me go ahead and start my ministry. Because I even know better than them. But you have to wait for another 18 years. Mm. Have you noticed from 12 years when he went into the temple to when he was 30, the Bible never mentioned anything about him? Mm -hmm. Many people want to be seen easily. But Jesus Christ, for 18 years, there was no record of him. Mm -hmm. Nobody heard of him. He isolated himself and prepared intensively. Mm -hmm. And that explains why he used only three years to preach. Mm -hmm. Only three years. To preach, yet books about him is more than books about every human being on earth put together. Songs about him is more than songs about all human beings put together. Just three years. This should tell you how important and significant preparation is. Somebody say preparation. Preparation. So when you are well prepared. You don't panic. Mm -hmm. When you are well prepared, you live up to your expectation. As a matter of fact, when David was going to fight Goliath, if you remember the story very well, he picked five stones. But do you know that it was the first stone he picked, he slew at Goliath, that killed Goliath? It means that when you are well prepared, you don't even need another chance. Mm -hmm. When you are well prepared, you don't need another opportunity. When you are well prepared, the first opportunity that comes your way, you maximize it. And I want to challenge each one of us. Everything that we do, when you understand what I'm telling you, some of us will begin to go back to school and prepare very well. Because if you are not prepared and the job, beautiful position comes, and they want to give it to you, and you don't have any paper qualification to back it. It was Abraham Lincoln who said, I'll prepare and get ready, and perhaps my chance will come. So let us prepare. Preparation is very, very important. Even Jesus Christ, 30 years, when he went to baptize, right? Mm -hmm. As soon as John the Baptist saw him, John the Baptist didn't want to baptize him. John the Baptist said, no, you will have to baptize me. Jesus said, no, John, baptize me. John said, no, I can't baptize you. Have you forgotten that I can't even unlace your shoe? Please baptize me. Jesus said, no, John, baptize me to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. As John baptized Jesus, John said, I saw the heavens open." And the Spirit of God descended upon him in the form of a dove. Yeah. And then a voice from heaven spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. After Jesus Christ hearing this, had he been any of us, he would straight away go ahead and preach. But he didn't even do that. Mm -hmm. Instantly, he was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. Forty days and forty nights, church, he was fasting, he was praying, he was seeking his father's face. Not only that, even after that, when he started his ministry, Bible tells us in Mark chapter 1, verse number 35, that every day, as his manner is, as his custom is, 
he would get up very early in the morning to an isolated place and pray. Could you believe that? Every day, he did that daily. It was a custom. It was a practice. It was his tradition. Have you prayed today? Amen. Do you have a set time you pray? Mm -hmm. You pray when you feel like. And that's why your prayers are not being answered. Mm -hmm. Church, let us change our attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, this faith, 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 faith thing has not helped many of us. We think we can just pray <coughs> two by four faith prayer and everything will be fine. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. There is also something we call traveling prayer. Jesus Christ in John chapter 15, verse 21, he said prayer is like a woman who has gone to the labor world to give birth. When our sister was at the Presbyterian hospital giving birth to Jayla, check this out. The reason why Jayla came out is because she travailed. She travailed. Had she not travailed, like Jayla was going to die in her womb. So she travailed and the child came out. So in prayer you travailed. So it's not just by faith, Father, I receive my healing in Jesus' name, and it is done. Sometimes it works. Other times, too, you have to travail. You have to pray intensively. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ went to Gethsemane, and Bible recorded in Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 7. He says, who, in the days of his flesh, he prayed with crying and tears, mm -hmm. and he was said in that he prayed with crying and tears. Do you know that? It was early in the morning in Gethsemane. Yet Bible says the sweat that came out from his body was as thick as blood. Mm. He prepared earnestly and after that prayer, angels came and they strengthened him. Mm. That's what the Bible tells us in Luke. Mm. So you get ready for the Golgotha and Gethsemane challenge. Golgotha and Calvary challenge. So preparation church is very, very important. When you don't prepare well, you can live up to your expectation. It doesn't matter how skillful you are. If you don't prepare, it will be seen mm -hmm. in the way you do things. Amen. Amen. Moses didn't know this. So when he was 40 years, he thought he was well prepared because civilization started in Egypt along the banks of River Nile. The first writings in the world, they call it hieroglyphics. So the Egyptians were highly advanced and developed. Mm -hmm. And Moses was groomed to become the next Pharaoh. He had all the beautiful education. He could read, he could write. And at the age of 40, he thought he was ready. So he went to meet the Israelites. And then when two of them were fighting, he asked them, why are you fighting? You are brothers. You are not supposed to fight. Then one of them asked him, who made you a judge and a ruler over us? You think you can kill me like the way you killed the other Egyptian? And the news spread very fast, so he ran away. But he running away, he went to Midian. Mm -hmm. And God used Midian to turn his life around completely. Mm -hmm. When he went to Midian, he went to live with Jethro, the priest of God. I told you this last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Jethro was introduced as the priest of God. Mm -hmm. Moses spent 40 years with Jethro. Because a, a year in Egypt for a year with Jethro. Mm -hmm. A week for a week. A day for a day. A decade for a decade. So that God through Jethro would take away from Moses by preparation. Every negative thing Egypt had given him. Mm. So Moses came out a different person. Remember, he ran away. Mm -hmm. But then he went with boldness because he had prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Mm. And that's why, church, we need to prepare every one of us. Amen. Everything that we do, we need to prepare. Let's begin to prepare financially. Because of what is going to happen in the future, we have no idea. Because of contingency sake, let's begin to Start laying some money aside. I give my wife credit in this because she's always mindful. She wants us to put money aside. But let's do that, church. Let's always put money aside by preparation. Because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Mm -hmm. Let's prepare academically. Let's prepare mentally. Let's prepare psychologically. Let's prepare in every area possible. Let's prepare our children. You have no idea how many of your children is destined to become the governor of North Carolina. You have no idea how many of your children are going to become the president of this great country. You have no idea the blessings God is going to bestow on each one of your children. And that's why we should put preparation, preparation in the lives of our children. But it starts from us. It starts from us. So let us prepare. Amen. Amen. When we are well prepared, we will never be found wanting. One thing about preparation is this. 
Paul, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, he said, when he received the vision, he did not confer with flesh and blood. He isolated himself to the desert in Arabia and sought God's faith in prayer and fasting. People don't know because they think as soon as God saved Paul, he went ahead and preached. No, he said he went to the desert of Arabia, spent time, sought God's faith in fasting and prayer. And then when he knew he was well paid, he came out. No wonder he wrote one third of the books in the New Testament. Because he prepared very well. Even Jesus, to his own disciples, he told them, go and wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. <laughs> Preparation. He didn't ask them to preach. He said, go and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Don't do anything. Go and then prepare yourselves very well. And that's why they were able to affect many lives. Church, if we are going to impact lives, it is very crucial that we prepare very well. Mm -hmm. This book we are going to launch in two weeks' time. The Abrahamic Steps. You have no idea when I started writing this book. 1994. Mm -hmm. Could you believe that? 1994. I started putting thoughts together about this book. Mm -hmm. And almost every time I add something, I remove something, I add something. Mm -hmm. And now it has become a complete book. I read through last night and I started clapping for myself. Mm -hmm. I felt so good. <laughs> I felt so good the things I wrote in this book. But it took a lot of inspiration. Several pastors I gave to them. I made sure most of the Baptist leadership in Raleigh, they read through the book. Several pastors in Europe, Canada, they wrote through the book. They asked me, who taught you these things? Where did you learn these things? Little did they know that I started preparing in 1994. Church preparation is very, very important. Because when you are prepared very well, then you live up to your expectation. So in conclusion, in everything that we do, church, let us prepare prayerfully and plan purposefully, proceed positively, and pursue persistently. If you do that, we'll make it big. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.